Rust and Golang are two programming languages that every high value software engineer should know. And today we're going to check interfaces and traits in both Golang and Rust. Let's check it out. 50% of my viewers are still not subscribed to my channel. So if you like the content I'm providing to you, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. Let's fucking go. A very common use case in systems programming, or even uh, if you do blockchain development or whatever, is that you need to sign uh, some, some uh, arbitrary data, right? And in blockchain, for example, you could say, uh, sign me the transaction, right? You could say, sign me the transaction, and that's gonna return a, a slice of bytes like this, um, and it's all good. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna take the transaction, and then we need to hash that transaction into arbitrary into bytes right and then we're gonna sign that bytes right so it's gonna hash it we're gonna have the the hash which is bytes and then we're gonna sign that and return the signature okay but it could be that we need to do it for transactions but of course we're also gonna need to do this for example uh for a block right it's gonna be a type of block uh but we also could say uh sign me uh some arbitrary data which is gonna be uh, a vec of, of, of u weights or even a slice of u weights, some arbitrary data. And if we really wanna take it a step further, uh, it could be that we gonna say, uh, yo, sign me the header, the header of the block, for example, which is gonna be, for example, a type of header, right? So you can already see that this sign function will take in a lot of different types, but actually will do the same, right? So how can we uh, make this even better? Well, that's where traits or interfaces uh, in Golang come in, right? So let's see how we can refactor this. So this is gonna be, a, uh, the composability of our program will be much neater and much more extendable and maintainable. So in Rust, you could say something like uh, a thread, right? It's the, basically the equivalent of, of interfaces in Go. And we could say, uh, in our case, uh, the thread hasher, and that will basically implement uh, the hash function, right? The hash function and it's going to take in uh, a self and it's going to basically just return us um, a slice of bytes right a uh, slice of u8 and it's good so everybody that wants to be that everybody that needs to wants to satisfy the hasher uh, thread trait is need to implement the hash function that's it uh, it's, it's as simple as that so we could have for example the sign function we mentioned in the beginning and we could say for example uh, sign we're going to take in a hasher we're gonna take in a hasher, and then we're gonna say, um, we borrow, and we need to specify the DIN keyword. Uh, it's very important, otherwise it will not work, and the DIN keyword is just uh, for dynamic dispatching. And for new beginning Rust uh, developers of programmers, don't worry about this. Just know that you need to specify this, right? And later on, if you really want, um, if, you, if you're a little bit more experienced, you can look up what DIN actually does and why it's needed and blah, 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 and yada, 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 right? Uh, but don't worry about it for now. We just need to keep injecting dopamine into our brain. So we're going to say hasher is going to be a DIN of, uh, what's going on here? We're going to say a DIN of hasher, right? It's going to take in this hasher thread. And uh, we're going to return these um, U-weights, right? And what we're going to say in the signature, basically, we're gonna pseudo code this function, right? Just don't expect any fancy stuff. It's just for demonstration purposes. We're gonna say let uh, the hash is gonna be the hasher uh, hash, right? Just this function, because we know it will implement that hash function because it's a hasher, right? So we're gonna say just hash hash. Then we're gonna say do some uh, signature logic right here. Uh, signature logic, yeah, like this. And then we're gonna, for now, we're gonna just return the hash, right? Of course, we're gonna return the signature. But uh, for the sake to make the compiler satisfying, to make the compiler happy, we're gonna just return the hash so it will uh, work all just fine. Yes, so for example, let, let's make us uh, a transaction. So we could say a struct a transaction like this. And we could say uh, a transaction could literally have anything you want, right? So let's say, let's give it an ID, which is gonna be uh, an I32 or something, and let's give it a nonce. Some, some random stuff, of course, let's make it uh, an i64. It doesn't really matter. And if we want to, wait, let's 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 try it here, right? We're gonna say let uh, tx is gonna be a transaction like this. And we're gonna say um, that the ID is gonna be 100. It doesn't really matter. And the nonce uh, should be something random, but hey, we're gonna say it's four, right? And then we could do something like let a uh, signature, right? It's gonna be sign. And then we could pause in this transaction 
and it's gonna work it's not gonna work for two reasons first of all because we didn't pause it we didn't borrow uh this transaction and the second thing why it's not working is because tx does not implement the hasher interface right the hasher trait actually to be to be concrete in rust how do we do this well we could say uh implement uh implement the hasher for transaction right and the only thing we need to do here is basically say a van uh, hash which will take in ourself uh, like this and then we're gonna return this slice of bytes you wait and we could basically uh, do some uh, hashing logic here right and in our case we're gonna just uh, return us uh, some arbitrary data uh, 0x1 0x2 and maybe 0x3 right so this is basically a slice of bytes a slice of u8 and then you can already see that the compiler is satisfied and we could actually just like print uh, ln this thing out so we could say something like this uh, debug it and then we're going to say the sig uh, it's not going to work like this i think oh it is okay but we also could do two vec uh, but hey if it works like that why not and then we could do cargo run and you could see that it will just return uh, what we need and you can already see it coming now it can work for transaction but it can also work for a block right because we could say uh, just copy this um, let's let's actually copy it here let's copy this uh, shenanigans here we could say uh, for example a block right could have the same things could have different things it doesn't really matter and then uh, we can copy this this implementation for transaction I paste it below the block right and then we could say uh, implement hasher for the block like this and instead of making this transaction we could say uh let block uh, is going to be uh, a block like this right and put in the block here in and then you can see cargo run and it all works just fine that's how we can use traits uh, in rust to basically uh, make our program a little bit more dynamic a little bit more composable better to test and also um easier to maintain and to swap things around so let's now go to go and see how it works there so we are now in our main.go file in go and we are going to check out how we need to do this uh in go the same thing we did in our rust program so the first thing we're going to do is say um let's make our interface we're going to say type hasher and that's going to be an interface uh, like this and we're going to say uh, the hash function which will basically return as a slice of bytes right that it's already been done the next thing we're going to make is this function which is the sign function and that will take in a hasher which is uh this hasher interface right it needs to satisfy that and it's going to return a slice of byte right and then we're going to say for example we're going to say that the hash is going to be hasher uh hash like this right it's going to be a slice of bytes and then we're going to say do sign uh signature logic here signature logic here right just the same thing we did in rust and then we could say just return the hash like this right but it's going to be return the signature we could even do if you don't understand this we could say the signature is going to be the hash which is even more complicated and then return the sig right uh, doesn't even matter but you get you get the point right this this should do signature shenanigans so it will return a signature so you can return a slice of bytes if that makes sense all right uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is basically uh, let's say type uh, transaction uh, like this which is gonna be a strict like this and then we're gonna say for example it's gonna have uh, an ID which is gonna be an int and a nonce uh, which is gonna be an n64 or something hey, it does not really matter it could hold any data you want and uh, let's make this thing let's say um, that the hash it's actually the signature by the way that the signature is going to be uh we're going to say sign and let's first create this transaction by the way we're going to say tx is going to be a transaction and you can see it's it's a lot a lot of similarities between rest and go right we're going to say it's going to be a transaction and um let's make this actually uh, a reference or a pointer to a transaction just for the sake and it's going to have an id which is going to be one and then the nonce which should be something random you could say rand int and blah 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 but just for the sake of let's do 100 or something then we have this tx and then we're gonna say uh sign this transaction right but it's not going to work let's quickly uh do this print ln so the compiler is uh happy 
And of course, uh, if, if we check the error, it's going to say cannot use the X uh, because the transaction does not implement hasher, right? So let's 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 fix this. So we could say in uh, in Golang instead of doing implement for in Golang, you can just uh, implement the function. We're going to say func is going to be um, the X, which is going to be a pointer to a transaction. We're going to say uh, hash like this, and it will just return some bytes. And we could do the same thing. We're going to say uh, return uh bytes and you could do the same thing right you could say zero uh, x one two and three like this and now we can say go run main.go and we have the same output and of course uh, you can see it once again already common uh, we could just copy this this transaction uh like this actually we can copy the whole shebang right you could copy uh, these two functions paste them in here and then let me put this a little bit higher on the screen like this uh, we're going to say it's going to be a type block or something. And uh, let's say this B is going to be a uh, block. And we're going to do the same thing. And then instead of this TX, we could say, uh, yeah, let's make it block. It's going to be a block type. And instead of the transaction, we could do block, right? And it's going to be, it's going to work all just fine. You see? This is basically how we can uh, do composability and, and fix some, some use cases where you should duplicate code and all that stuff uh, by using traits in Rust and interfaces in Go. As you can see in this video, both interfaces in Golang and traits in Rust work in a similar way. They allow us to use composability in our program. If you like this video, if you like the content I'm providing to you, consider subscribing to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and jump into the Discord for 24-7 education. And I'm looking forward to see you in my next video or in one of my live streams. Cheers.